Jeremy Weiss here. We're here live at Retail X. I'm here with Stephen of Burrow. Stephen, tell us what you do. Uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, so at Burrow, we sell direct to consumer furniture. Um, typically, when customers are buying furniture, they're picking between heavy, expensive stuff, think like crate and barrel, rest, all the way up to restoration hardware, or they're buying cheap, flimsy, disposable stuff. Um, but modern consumers want value, right? They want quality products, but they don't want to wait forever for them. They don't want to overpay for them. And they also need them to be able to move with them. So we designed, we designed furniture that is optimized to be shipped in a week um, directly to your home from our factory in North mm. Carolina. Um, it can be set up in a few minutes and then it's really high quality furniture that can easily move with you when you inevitably do move a few a few years later. How did you get into this business of furniture? Yeah, uh, if you told me five years ago that I was gonna be running a furniture company, I would <laughs> told you to get lost. Um, you know, when I moved to business school to start, um, or where did you go? At, to Wharton. Okay. We're, we're one of the many direct to consumer furniture, or not furniture, but direct to consumer brands that have emerged from that school. Um, no, when I when I when I got to Philly um, for business school, my co-founder and I had to buy furniture, and um, he bought one from a sofa from West Elm. It took 12 weeks to arrive. I went the IKEA route. You know, spent hours on the floor with an Allen key putting it together. And we we're like, this is miserable. Sounds terrible. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, but there's got to be a better way to do this. And so um, we were in an entrepreneurship class, the same class that Warby Parker was started in. I was going to say, Warby Parker, yeah. Yes, it was literally the same thing. And so okay. we start, made a, a pitch deck and a business model. And, you know, a few years later, we've got a, a big furniture mm -hmm. brand. Do any of the um, professors there, I know sometimes they'll get involved as advisors or, you know, put capital in yeah some of the some of the professors in the marketing uh, department helped out with advising and then one of them David Bell who's yeah. famous I've met for, David yeah, for, yeah, yeah. He, he invested he's like you know has a lot of Warby Parker and some other other brands right yeah he was so he's no longer a professor at the school he's now he doing his, no he has his own uh, incubator now um, but Makes sense. he was just like you know all these companies I have first access to like seeing behind the scenes how they're doing and then as they get traction I can just write a check I was in his class and he wanted to invest and he was like we should probably wait till after the class is over just so there's no it's like dating a student sort of <laughs> yeah. not not really but, you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> we were like yeah we'll wait we'll wait until the class is over we don't want to make anything what's some good advice you've gotten from David um, from David it's to not compromise on on brand mm. um, it, you know it's so funny so we went through Y Combinator the Y Combinator yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. we were not a traditional Y Combinator company yeah obviously. because they usually take tech tech exactly. companies exactly and why we, why do you think they took you um, you know they really just take smart business opportunities mm. um, they tend to do a lot of tech I think that's their brand um, but they're not opposed to models where you know for us it's like a you know hundred billion dollar industry super fragmented the growth of online is rapid but it's still just a small percentage of the industry and so they they saw the same thing we saw there's an opportunity to create a multi-billion dollar brand um, by doing something different mm. and like optimized for the way modern consumers shop and live um, so I think that that, that hooked them um, but, the, but whenever we mentioned the word brand at YC they were like you're wasting why is that they're just like you know your brand is what y your customers say it is you don't invest in brand you don't create a brand but then obviously for a consumer physical product like brand is really important um, and it's not just a fluffy thing of like you know what your logo and color scheme is right it's, right it's what do you stand for and how are you engaging with your customers yeah. and you know what's your value proposition how do you communicate that in a concise consistent way is that because they're more worried about driving direct sales yeah is that why well like in a tech product right like if you're buying some piece of software you care about the functionality and if it works right you don't care like what the value proposition that how they're communicating versus if you're buying a physical product a consumer product there's an emotional connection there's an emotional component to it right you can like there's a reason why there are th there could be a better product that does, like take the zune microsoft zune for instance was a superior product to the ipod but the iPod, everyone bought because they liked Apple and they like Apple's yeah, brand. Yeah, nine out of ten people will say, "What's a Zoom?" Exactly, they don't exist anymore because um, Apple or, or Microsoft was too focused on the functionality in the product, and and Apple mm. said, "We got a great product. Now we're going to create a lifestyle around it." Mm. And like, if you identify with this type of lifestyle, you want the iPod, and everyone else has the iPod. So, what uh, good advice did you get from Y Combinator? Some people Y Combinator. 
Y Combinator's whole mentality is learn fast, like just try things out and then yeah. iterate and you'll figure it out. And so what we, were you trying? we started selling our sofa before, like our first product is a modular sofa that ships in the mail. We hadn't made it yet and we didn't even have a manufacturer and they said- That's like lean startup. Yeah, totally lean startup. Technology lean startup, I feel like physical goods lean startup is tough. Very tough, very tough. So they said, start start pre-selling it. So we made a made a Squarespace page and made a fake version of the sofa, like just like a regular sofa and Photoshopped it and edited it in PowerPoint to create different colors. I mean, it was like very, very basic. It started taking pre-orders and they were rolling in and then we were like, what do you do? Yeah, we got to figure out how to make this thing. And, and then, of course, the pre-orders were delayed and then you're dealing with customers and then, you know, you're getting real time feedback from your customers on how the product is. And you're right, from, from the tech product, you can roll out iterations of it pretty fast and make tweaks to it and fix bugs. Yeah, you sofa, can't roll out. Here's your sofa. Oh, we'll come over and make a tweak to that leg. Yeah, no, no, you've got to you're getting feedback from people and then you're trying to help like they need to be happy though, right? And so the, the early, so you get these early customers that are giving feedback and you I- iterate on it and roll it into the future versions of it and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, it's more expensive to keep people happy because some of them you got to send them a new sofa and that's not cheap. So, um, but, but it did force us to grow really fast and just keep gaining momentum hmm. um, and just trying things out and then fixing it later. So talk about the evolution in a company. So you start off, you do the pre-sell page, now you're, you're shipping product, what's the next stage? So the next stage for us is uh, expanding into all furniture categories. We always knew we wanted to be a furniture brand, but the sofa was the biggest pain point, the center of the living room, center of the home really, right? The most important piece in, 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 for any furniture brand, if you buy the sofa, a lot of people want to buy everything from like the same company because they, they know it all go together. Yep. Um, if we could nail it with the perfect sofa, we would then be able to sell them all, all these other products and have the same approach of how do we design it more thoughtfully to be shipped you know, in the mail for a lot less money, but still be the same quality as higher end brands. Um, so we're gonna lo- continue to launch those products. Um, and it's because we had this base of the sofa. I mean, we sold over $20 million worth of this one single sofa style in the first two That's years. Amazing. Yeah, nobody's ever done that before. So wow. yeah, hopefully we can keep that going with the other products. So right now, what do you see is, I'm sure you're looking at other brands and e-commerce. What are some of the um, challenges you see other people experiencing or they're bleeding into what, what you guys are working on? Yeah, so I mean, in just looking in, in furniture in particular, the biggest challenge is last mile delivery. Mm. It's expensive to ship large products that are, that are also, they're also expensive to warehouse because like yeah. sofas are big and bulky, right? Um, and so- That's, that's why I'm so curious of what attracted them. I, I hear furniture, I hear really hard to ship bulky products. Yes. So our sofa, if you think about it, like each seat, it's a modular sofa. So each seat comes apart and the backrest falls down, the cushions come off and and you ship those in each in the individual boxes that are within the UPS dimensional weight guidelines. So we don't get hit with a large package surcharge. So we can ship anywhere in the country from our factory in North Carolina in less than a week. And we can do it for about a hundred bucks on average. It would cost. That's amazing. Yeah. Most furniture brands have to, will pay hundreds of thousands of dollars shipping the Mm. furniture. Um, and companies like Wayfair are offering two day shipping, but they're bleeding cash doing it because it costs so much money and then they have free returns and everything. And then, and then other brands just can't afford it. And so, cause they just have a different business model than, mm. than Wayfair. And so then they have to have a delayed shipping and they also have to eat that cost of shipping last mile mm. bulky stuff. We designed it from day one to be shipped with UPS ground shipping. Um, and that allows us to be, you know, much more nimble yeah. and just designed for, you know, modern e-commerce. Yeah. Sorry, I had to go on that tangent, but yeah, I'll we'll talk about the <laughs> challenges for a second. Yeah. What's um, bleeding in as far as the challenges go? For challenges um, for us early on, it was manufacturing. Um, in the furniture industry, uh, typically brands like Restoration Hardware, Design Within Reach, they'll go to manufacturers and say, I like this and this. The manufacturers are working with furniture designers and they'll come up with new collections and whatnot. And then I say, I like this one, this one, and this one. That's what I'm going to sell on my website or at my store. Um, And if you go to a manufacturer and you say, I've got this brand new design and this brand new way of producing my furniture, I want you to do it. They're like, no, like, unless you're going to buy a thousand out of, you know, on day one, there's like, why am I going to invest in developing this new process? This is the way that we make furniture, sell what we make. And so early on, we approached all these manufacturers with this, you know, great idea. And they said, 
no, like that's just how we make. And so we had to find this small factory outside of Mexico City mm. um, that was willing to work with us, prototyped with them, quickly outgrew them while we were producing pre-orders, moved to like a medium-sized factory in Mississippi, um, outgrew them within a year. We were like dominating their entire factory. And then uh, last summer we switched to a very large manufacturer in North Carolina. Mm. Um, and now as we're getting to all these other product categories, we're developing a global supply chain. But that's been incredibly challenging to kind of scale that with demand and kind of time. I'm losing out. sleep even thinking about what you're <laughs> saying right now, actually. <laughs> it's stressful, it's stressful for sure. What kind of team do you need to put on place? Because now it started the two of you, right? Yeah, it was two of us. Um, we've now brought in actually a very world-class team. Um, we have uh, our head of marketing, ran marketing and e-commerce at Design Within Reach for the last eight years. Um, we have a VP of, of product. Um, he has experience with furniture design, industrial design, has overseen a massive furniture program in the past. Um, and then we've got some seasoned operators, um, a really strong creative team. Because the, the brand and the creative direction has to be innovative and different. If we're creating these innovative products that are gonna serve people in a different way than any furniture company ever has before, we have to speak to them differently too. And we always play this game where if you take all these catalogs, these furniture catalogs, and you cover up the logo and say, who do you think this, mm. this brand is? It could be anyone. Is it CB2? Is it West Elm? Is it Restoration Hardware? Right. You don't know. They're all shooting in the same locations. That looks the same. It's very aspirational, but it's it's very stale. There's no people in it. It's not lived in. And so we communicate differently where we say, we understand that you live in your home and you want it to look nice, but it's got to be realistic, right? There's going to be a coffee cup on the coffee table and a half-eaten breakfast sandwich and there's people on it and there's pets on it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's okay. And like we celebrate that and that resonates with our customers. So we have to yeah. have a, a really strong creative director to lead that yeah. vision. I feel like there should be like one of those kind of purple mattress commercials yeah. uh, for your for one of your we have your some. pieces. We like have some you? some commercials. Okay. We have we have one so our, our sofa has a, a hidden USB charger in it. Uh -huh. Um and so we have a commercial where this robot walks into his living room and sits down after a long day and then he plugs himself into the couch oh, and then nice. like lights back up and then he actually <laughs> takes off his helmet. It's a guy inside and he's just like eating a sandwich. That's great. I love it. <laughs> Where can people find your website and some of these uh, cool videos. Yeah, uh, burrow.com, B-U-R-R-O-W. And then if you just YouTube Burrow, you'll see our new, uh, the Never Normal is our is our campaign. Those are the All campaigns right. with the new commercials that are cool. interesting. Jeremy Weiss, live from RetailX.